walk this Martin's dream, I come all by any means. for Flint, for water filtration systems. So I salute all of you all. A lot of the Flint residents came and we handed them, everyone left with the Berkey water filter today. All praises are due to God. But we did this with nothing. Nothing but knowing and meeting people and coming together with unity. And most importantly, hip hop. Hip hop can be used as a tool, it's a universal language. Music is a universal language, and it, it speaks value. So use Utah, um, hip hop for unity and positivity. Peace, I'm Ben Ortiz. I'm the assistant curator of the hip hop collection here at Cornell University. Um, I've been at this university for 14 years and I've been in this job for five years now. I've been involved with the Hip Hop Collection since its inception though, uh, nine years ago, going on 10 years. Our job is to collect, preserve, and make available for education the artifacts of hip hop culture, all of hip hop culture. We haven't achieved the mission of assembling everything that there is. We might not ever get there, but we, we planted our feet very firmly as a place that's interested in promoting the values and the messages within the original um, philosophies behind hip hop culture. That particular piece of paper on that wall right there, that is the very first time that that logo was ever drawn. Mm. And that, that logo on that piece of paper was in a stack of other proposed logos and color schemes that was submitted to Charlie Ahern, the director of Wild Style by a graffiti artist named Zephyr. It's an important thing to keep alive. You know, when we're talking about this right here, 1981, y'all, 1981. I'm working primarily with college students. Freshmen coming in this fall, born in 1998. Their reference point is so far removed from that. That's like expecting all of us to know everything that went down in the blues era. That feels like ancient history to us. We know that it's not that long ago. It's not thousands of years ago. It's a couple generations before we were born. And we feel like once we learn about it, we can go, oh, now I kind of understand how the world became what it is today. You have to put yourself in the shoes of somebody born 98, 99, 2000. And how learning about something from the 70s and the early 80s can make you go, oh, now I get it. Now I get it. Because it's not that far removed, right? It's just far enough just far enough. <laughs>